Okay, so I got my measurements on where I wanted to mount my controller to the piece of 2-inch aluminum stock, and I lightly put some little marks with some permanent marker where I was going to drill the holes. And I took it off the bike, and I clamped it down to a piece of 2x4 where I can drill through the metal and through the rubber roofing without puncturing it or ruining it by uh, just applying pressure to the wood and drilling through it. Okay, and after tapping them for number 8s and putting some... Uh, screws through with some washers and this is what it looks like from the bottom side. Now I'm going to be flipping it over and installing the controller on those nuts. Put the controller onto the piece of 2 inch aluminum stock and as you can see there are the four screws that I drilled through. Put some number 8 washers on them and some 832 nuts on top of them with washers and it's not going anywhere. Things on there pretty solid. out good. So now I can mount this back on the bike and to get an idea of what I need to do to wire everything. Uh, a couple other things I'm doing is right now I have the torque arms off the bike and I'm painting those and I also went to the hardware store and bought new bolts like I said I was going to with some stainless steel washers. Also another thing that I did was I took my throttle and I toned out all the wires because my golden motor kit had an on off switch on my throttle and I toned out the continuity to, to these two wires so what I'm going to be doing is using these two wires to make and break my controller and so by doing that when I come up to my throttle here and I hit this little button that'll turn my bike on that'll turn the bike off simple as that Okay, and that's what it looks like mounted on the bike. As you can see, I put the heads of the screws from the underneath, and by putting four of them instead of two in the center, it allows me to make it so both of the heads of the bolts aren't hitting the frame on both sides, and it allows the rubber to still make contact with the center of the frame. So as you can see, I got it bolted back down. Everything's nice and snug. That's going to be the permanent spot for the controller. And now all we have to do is finish sizing up the battery packs and get them in there. Well, I gave the torque arms a final coat of paint, and uh, after letting them dry overnight, they are now good to put back on the bike. So I can finally bolt down the motor and get ready to wire my motor phase wires to the controller. One less step. And here's a shot of the painted torque arm installed with the new hardware, stainless steel washers and hex bolts. Okay, I brought the half-built battery pack into work so I could put it in the bike triangle and it seems to work out good. Uh, it's actually almost perfect. I also brought uh, a turning meter that I'm going to be putting some 45 amp Andersons on today. I already soldered them, I just need to put them in their housings. And I got a soldering iron and some solder. So what I'm going to be doing today is probably wiring my motor phase wires over to my controller because I'm about ready to start testing batteries and I'm going to need that to be hooked up first. Okay, it's another day and I'm getting set up to solder my motor phases and my hall sensor wires and getting them brought over to my controller. So I got my wire down here all set up to go that I'm going to be lengthening my motor phase wires with and I got my soldering iron plugged in. I have some heat shrink tubing over here. There are my hall sensor extenders. I'm going to be heat shrinking that afterward and I got a heat gun and a Dremel tool that I was... Okay, I'm halfway through the soldering process and what I got going on here is I'm splicing them all in a straight fashion and once I solder them I, uh, I'm putting a little piece of heat shrink over the wiring. Okay, the heat shrink shrunk down properly and everything worked out good but I decided I wanted to double heat shrink my phase wires just in case uh, somehow through the vibrations of riding the bike they wore out and touched each other. That would be a dead short that I don't want to happen. So I'm just going to double it up with a little larger of a heat shrink over the other heat shrink. So after we shrink that down, we can get this large piece shrunk over all of it. 
Okay, I put the large piece of heat shrink on, and then I decided that I wanted a larger piece of heat shrink going over the entire harness again. So I'm going to shrink that down, and then I've successfully lengthened my motor phase wires and all of my hall sensor wires. Plenty long enough. I got a couple extra feet here. But what I was worried about was this little angle here, because as you can see my suspension, and you see my brake cable runs up a little high, and I'm going to be doing that with this too, so that when the suspension goes, it'll play up and down with the frame, and I don't have to worry about stressing the wires too much. So this heat shrink should keep it all in place and keep everything where it needs to be.